السلام عليكم اول شيء رمضان كريم عليكم شرعنا عليكم بالصحة والسلامة today we're gonna talk about the facial infections this is gonna be the part one of almost gonna be two lectures discussing this topic so today I gonna explain to you what's is the etiology and the route of spread of infection and please guys don't forget to scan this uh, barcode by the end of this lecture I'm expecting from you guys to know the etiology of an antigenic infection and understand the sequence of an antigenic infection plus the, the route of spread and what are the anatomical barriers that regulate the spread of as you remember or maybe still remember or you can go and check the dental pain lecture i show you this slide and we decided to discuss in details uh, the causes and the management of such case today we're gonna uh, go with the etiology and as you remember the cause of this situation is due to the acute abscess now what cause the abscess or infection in the, in the oral cavity mostly it's a bacterial infection most of the infections we see in the oral cavity or in the face are bacterial but however we can find a fungal infections that mostly are the candida group as you see in this uh, uh, diagram here or the pie diagram uh, the bacterial infection is a mixed infection okay so it means we have a combination of aerobic and anaerobic bacteria mostly is un, uh, mostly is aerobic cause and uh, the, this type of aerobic bacteria is called the gram positive cocci plus we have another anaerobic group which is the gram positive cocci and gram negative roles and again what we can conclude from this things like uh, the most bacteria that we can find of antigenic infection is uh, gram positive cocci the uh, num I can ask another question what is or what is the main cause of bacterial infection in the oral cavity Aerobic, aerobic bacteria or anaerobic you're gonna choose aerobic okay if I tell you what's the type of infection is it mainly uh, it's mixed aerobic or anaerobic infection you can choose mixed infection okay uh, fungal we're gonna have later on on there we'll discuss the most common fungal infection in the oral so what is the steps Sorry, what are the steps of uh, infection? First of all, we're gonna start with inoculation. Inoculation means that the microorganism gonna invade the tissue at the beginning, and which initiate the uh, oral facial infection is the aerobic streptococci, aerobic gram-positive bacteria. And again, this is another question. If I ask what is uh, what are the uh, initiation of oral infection I'm gonna say the aerobic streptococci or aerobic gram-positive bacteria is gonna trigger the infection till now we have no symptoms but when this microorganism start to release the hyaluronidase enzyme to destruct the host tissue and reduce the pH which means increase acidity and consume O2, the oxygen, because it's aerobic, then all of these things together are going to produce what we call an edema. Edema is a sort of swelling. Okay, but again, it's not huge, but diffuse and firm. So, this thing's going to introduce another type of anaerobic bacteria. We're going to have it in details in a, in a second. But again, the anaerobic sorry the aerobic gram-positive cocci gonna lead to things called cellulitis 
cellulitis it's the spread infection of the tissues it's dangerous could cause death if we didn't manage it as soon as we see the patient as you can see it's a diffuse swelling with red skin and when you touch it it's neither fluctuant neither firm is something in between and again if you see a patient in this case you have to refer it to the hospital immediately if you cannot do the treatment again after the infection was initiated by aerobic microorganism now gonna have the role of anaerobic bacteria to necrose and more destroy the tissue and uh, produce byproducts why we have anaerobic and we start with the aerobic bacteria because as I mentioned the aerobic bacteria at the initiation of infection consumed all the oxygen then this uh, the low level of oxygen gonna provide a good environment for the anaerobic cocci and rods to work and to complete the structure of the tissue then the formation of what we know as the abscess abscess is uh, a liquid uh, texture material can I have a yellow or greenish color just like this one okay and you see here the area is almost bounded not spread just like cellulitis with a more, more localized and more fluctuant at the center the easy way to manage this one is to do the drainage either make a skin incision or extract the accused tooth best way guys to treat all of the above mentioned cases is to treat the accused tooth either by do a root canal if you can do a root canal or extract the tooth immediately this table can give you a good summary about the differentiation between edema, cellulitis, and abscess. And the most important thing, the seriousness here is the greatest, this the least, and this is the low. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, low, uh, low, uh, low risk. So, what are the origin of infection? Origin of odontogenic infection is of two types. It could be from the tooth pulp sorry from the pulp or it's going to be pulpal origin like and then it's the infection spread from the necrotic pulp to the periapical area or periodontal and again even chronic accumulation of the calculus can lead to infection. so how do the bacteria spread how do the bacteria move in the infection site? It's gonna move in everywhere, anterior, posterior, everywhere, and the spread of infection always follow the least resistant area. Which means, like whenever they find a weak point in the tissue, they're gonna go. They don't have a specific pattern of spread. However, uh, we have and anatomical barriers that control the and regulate the way the infection spread. What are these? Let's go and have it in details. Three main things we need to uh, that are play a great and significant role in regulating the pathway of infection when they want to spread root tip location bone thickness and muscles attachment root tip beside the number of two. so the root tip the curvature of the root number of the roots and all depend play a significant role in uh, infection spread pathway it's going to be either buccally palatal or lingual the level of muscle attachment and please remember these muscles in the maxilla we have buccinator, levator, angulioris and the mandible we have three muscles buccinator, mylohyoid which are the most important two and the muscles of the lower lip 
Finally, the bone thickness. The thicker the bone, the more resistant to the spread of infection, and the thinnest the bone is the least resistant to spread of infection. And again, let's go discuss the root tip. The root tip of this anterior tooth is tilted close to the buccal cortical plate, which suggests the possibility of having a buccal uh, spreading of the infection. While wow. in this one, the tooth, the root tip is almost palatally located, so this is give a chance to uh, the spread of infection palatally. Again, this is the cross, uh, this is the anterior posterior section of the maxilla showing the root of the anterior tooth. This is the palatal part, this is the buccal part of the alveolar bone, this is the soft tissue and the buccal vestibule, and this is the cheek. Okay, and this the, and the second figure, although we have the tooth is buccally tilted because this is the upper first one with two roots. Again, we have another factor that controls the spread of infection, which is the muscles attachment. In the maxilla, we have the buccinator, as I said. If the root or the source of infection above the attachment of the buccinator muscle, then it's gonna be have a buccal space infection like this one. And if we have the source of infection below the attachment level of the vaccinator muscles, then we're going to have a buccal vestibule infection. This type of infection is less serious than this one because we can manage it intraorally. This one can spread to a more deep. Let's go have a look on the molar teeth, on the lower molar teeth. Uh, by the way, this diagram is wrong because we don't have two roots, buccal or lingual. We have two roots on the lower teeth, which is mesial and distal. But again, they did that just to illustrate things to you guys. Let's say if the first molar tooth, mesial root, is tilted more buccally. So we're going to have first scenario the infection gonna spread buccally mean the pus or cellulite is gonna go on this way once it perforates the buccal cortical plate sorry the buccal cortical plate then we're gonna have possible two scenarios and the key factor in this these two scenarios is the again the attachment of the vaccinator muscles which is this one if infection spread above the attachment we're gonna have a vestibular uh, pus accumulation inside the oral cavity or it's going to be more in the facial spaces like the buccal space. On the other hand, the lingual side, we're going to have the same possible scenarios but the muscle here is different. We have the mylohyoid muscle here and again if it's the infection is above the attachment or the insertion of the mylohyoid muscle, then we're going to have a sublingual space involvement. Or if it's below the attachment, we're going to have a submandibular space involvement, which is most the most serious infection for the anterior facial spaces. This is another diagram for the maxillary teeth. Again, we have buccal, palatal, and it's going to pose uh, possible goals to invade the sinus and can cause sinusitis. This diagram we're going to discuss more in details next week about the possible route of spread of infection, but we can keep one thing in mind, the lower third molar mostly spread lingually, the first molar is going to be mixed, something buccal and lingual, and the second molar always buccally, uh, the infection always spread buccally. Thanks for your listening guys, I hope that you have and that I clarify some things for you, please read the lecture carefully. And if you have any question, please let me know. Uh, thank you and have a nice weekend.